There are tools that I use in my videos pretty frequently that I often get questions about. People are wondering what extension they need or how they can access that or what do they need to download. It's all things that are just built into your dev tools. So in today's video, we're going to be diving in and looking at what they are and how you can use these tools. Hello, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And one of the best ways to be less frustrated with CSS is to be able to easily debug the problems that you're running into. So what we're going to do is here, I'm on the Stripe page because I recently did a video where I was looking and actually using the dev tools to figure out what they were doing um, and for this effect here. And I want to show you some of the, you know, while we're here and while we're on this page, we can look at some of the stuff that we can do. So in my dev tools, uh, I'm, I have them on docked right now just because it makes it a bit easier in the video to move them around. And the first thing I want to look at is this one right here, which is responsive mode, because this is what I get asked about easily the most often is how do you do that? So in Chrome, which I'm assuming most people are using, you open your dev tools and it's this little button right there and that opens responsive mode <laughs> and nice and easy. Uh, just know this is an emulation. It's not perfect, but it gives you a quick way to check your layout and see how things are working at different sizes. You can adjust the heights. You can pick from different devices as presets. And actually, let me just dock my dev tools for a second here. Um, and there's this little three button thing, uh, dot thing here, whatever you call those, um, that gives you, if you don't see certain things that you want to bring in, like your media queries, we can see all the media queries that Stripe is using here, for example. Um, on their site. And so you can see this on your own to see where your breakpoints are in different stuff. Or if you're experimenting and diving into other people's pages too, it can be useful. So you can play around with the extra settings, including capture screenshot or full size screenshot and other stuff uh, that could be useful right there. The same option is in Firefox. It's just instead of being on the left side of the dev tools, it is on the right side of your dev tools. The next one I want to look at is a really simple one, but it is the styles tab here. And I guess saying just like come and look at your styles tab is kind of like a little bit of a cop out <laughs> um, in terms of like what you can do in here uh, or a, like a useful feature, but it's amazing that people don't really seem to come into here very often to see what's happening. So like, say you come in and you want to look at something that you're having trouble with. You use this little guy right here, the little like arrow tool, you click on it. So like, this is what I was trying to understand when I was doing the straight page. So I click on it and then I can see all the different properties that are being applied to it. I can see things that are crossed off. And if they're crossed off, that means two, one of two things. <laughs> um, actually, if it's just crossed off like that, it means that it's there's something overwriting it. So here position is not relative because over here there's a position of absolute that's overwriting it. So another class or something that is causing something, you know, to be overwritten for whatever reason. So this could be if you're writing your own CSS and you have the same property twice. I've done this. I'm setting like width 80% save, say, why is my width not changing? And then I look here and I realize, oh, I have another one lower down that's actually setting the width to something different. And so using your dev tools is a really easy way. If something's not working, don't just keep hitting your head over the wall, come and look and see, is the property you're doing being crossed out? <laughs> um, because another time it will be crossed out is actually if there's a typo in it. So if you misspell position, you'll see that it's crossed out as well. Uh, let's come and fix, let's add a new one here actually. Let's just see if this works. So um, position, but we'll misspell it uh, red. I don't know. There we go. Uh, and you get this little exclamation mark. And if you hover on top of it, it will tell you what the problem is. Uh, in this case, it's an unknown property name. So it goes, you know, and then you go, oh, I made a typo because obviously I very much misspelled it, but sometimes that you might do a trans, uh, transition or something. And when you're looking at it here, you see it, but when you're looking at it in your own code, little typos, it's really easy to miss them. So you see this and you go, oh, it's a typo. I can go and fix that in my code right away instead of banging my head against the wall. Uh, this also helps if I do transition like this and have red, because actually it's not showing me an error, but sometimes it will show you um, that it's an invalid property. Oh, it's because we're on transition. Let's try position. Position like that. Uh, there we go. And now it's telling me that it's an invalid property value. So the first one was saying that this was invalid. Now it's saying my value is invalid. So the value being invalid means you made a typo on this side rather than on the property name itself. Another really useful place is say you have like an element when you hover on top of it, it changes and you're trying to style this state, not when it's like this. 
And that can be hard to do because you can't see it all the time. Or you might have a drop down menu that when you hover, something appears or you click and it appears, whatever it is. And so what you can actually do is select that element in your dev tools and whoops, we jumped all the way to the top, but here we have that. And then in the style tab, I can go to hover and I can actually, you know, I can turn on hover and turn it off. And you can see when I do that, it turns and changes the state right there. And I can also change the active state. So it's actually active uh, focus to see what the focus state is and different stuff, if it's a visited and all the different types of pseudo classes that we have right here um, to be able to play around with and emulate that it's being hovered on makes either finding things because now I can actually find the hover state in here, which if this is off, you don't generally, you, you won't find your hover state in the CSS at all um, in the style tag or style tab, I should say. When the hover is on, now I actually see the different things. So if you're working on your own code, it just makes it easier to be able to do stuff that you want to style that way. And if you're looking at someone else's site and you're trying to understand how something was done, it lets you find some CSS that you might not have been able to find otherwise. Now, another thing we sort of saw already, but you can actually come in here and play with stuff as well. So you can see here on the start now, maybe you want to change something. So let's just move this around a little bit and I can come and add new styles. So this is the existing selector and it's actually at media pointer fine, which I won't get into, but it is looking for a mouse to be able to do this. So they'll have different um, types of effects, I guess, if you have a different pointer. And here, let's say I want to just do color is, whoops, got to spell it right though. Color is orange. I can add that and change it and just see here. And if it works well, you can bring that over to your own CSS. You can also right click and copy selector, copy rule, copy all declarations, copy all CSS changes uh, and bring these changes from here over to your own CSS file. If you've written a lot of CSS here to experiment with. Another thing that's interesting here is you can do like an element style. So if I come here, uh, let's just say color is red. This is only going to affect this one element because it's it's doing it as an inline style. But let's say you wanted to come and style something like your, a new selector. You can just click here on the plus sign and then it creates a selector based on whatever is selected. But I can change this to whatever I want. So I can just say P and then say that all my paragraphs have a color of red. And that might not work just because there's some inheritance and other stuff. So we'll throw an important on there and see if that actually works. It, there we go. We can see that the red is coming through on some of these paragraphs. Um, we don't see where the links are and stuff and not all of them because who knows what types of styles Stripe has going on. But you can see that, you know, you can select and create your own selectors here and you don't have to do everything through element styles or other stuff. Um, and then, of course, if you are making changes to here, just know that as soon as the page refreshes, all of those changes are gone. This is just to experiment with, play with. It's not actually saving any of the things that we're doing in here. The next thing, which is great for visualization, is your um, the grid and the flex inspectors. So here you can see that, um, sorry for the weird looking stuff here, but if I click on this, it's actually going to visualize the grid that's right there. And I can see the grid here on the page. And let's just see, and you can actually see if things are done with grid or flex as well because things that are done here, we can see that there's a grid here and this entire area is a flex. So if I click on the flex, there's a flex inspector, which isn't doing much in this case. Or if I click on the grid, I can see the grid um, being highlighted. So the spacing here is all coming from a, a row gap, separating things that way. Um, so sometimes or often, actually, it's very useful for layouts when you're debugging your layouts to turn these on, um, especially if you have more complex layouts going on. Here's a flex layout. Um, that doesn't, not doing quite what I thought it would be doing actually, but uh, yeah, I would really strongly recommend using your flex and your grid um, inspectors, especially if grid, if you have a complex layout going on and you're struggling to get things to line up where you want them to be, or you don't quite understand what's happening and it's a complex one, turning on your grid inspector is a really, really useful um, feature and tool. And when you're in the flex and grid inspectors too, another nice thing is in Chrome, we have these to quickly play around with your flex direction, your wrapping, your align content, justify content, align items. I know a lot of the time people get frustrated with align, is it justify, is it like what's going on? So first they visualize sort of the impact of what's happening. And then you can just come and like click and change stuff. I wasn't sure if anything would change, but look at that. We're, we're mucking around with, with the layout completely here. Um, so it just is a nice quick way to be like, oh, if I set this, what's actually going to happen? Oh, that's not doing anything. Um, so maybe this is the one I need to try whatever, but it's much faster than typing save. Nope. Wasn't that one delete 
come back. If you're getting stuck, open it up, maybe play around here. You have your flex direction, everything that you can play with um, to try and figure out what's happening. And we have the same thing with grid. When you come in on your grid, if I can find it, we have my grid controls that also come up here and you can sort of muck around. I don't know if this will change, but we see some small changes happening on the align um, content right there. So you can sort of play around with stuff to try and understand better what's happening and then eventually you won't need these anymore, but especially if you're learning them and you're getting frustrated with which one to pick, this can be super, super useful. Now, the last one I wanna look at is actually in Firefox's DevTools, and I've talked about this a while ago, but in Firefox DevTools, there's a few really nice things um, that we don't have in the Chrome one. Uh, one thing especially, and if you're new to CSS, I would actually recommend still using Firefox for debugging purposes. Uh, first of all, their grid inspector is a little bit better, in my opinion, than Chrome's uh, even today. So here, uh, th and the reason I say it's better, well, they really went heavy on grid, which is awesome, but um, they're not using grid area names, but the numbers and the names of grid items are much clearer in Firefox and much more like in your face in Firefox than they are in Chrome. So for that reason, I sort of like um, the Flexbox one or the, the visualizer in Firefox better than the one in Chrome. But more importantly than that is, let's say on this paragraph, I tried to do a align self end. And this is a completely valid property. And in all the other dev tools, this would show it as um, a valid, or when I say all, it's Chrome. I don't know if Safari's added something for this. So I know Jen Simmons is over there, so maybe she's implemented something similar. Um, but here you can see that it says align self end and it's not crossed off, it's not anything going on because there's nothing wrong. I spelt it right, there's no typos, it's completely valid, but it's not doing anything. And so it's grayed out and they put this little eye icon and if I hover on top, it tells me that this is a valid thing but it has no effect on this element because it is not a grid or flex item. And I'm sure you've done things and this would be the same, let's come on to this one here and I'm assuming there's no positioning on it. So let's just do a top of 100 pixels. Top 100 pixels is not working because this is not a positioned element. So this could be really useful. I'm sure you've run into situations where you try applying something and it's not working and there's nothing wrong with it. Firefox tells you sometimes why it's not actually working, even though it's completely valid what you've tried to do. Now, there's a lot of other useful dev tools that are in here. You can do things with colors, your gradients, uh, clip path, visualization. I would really recommend that you dive deeper into the world of dev tools. And there's also a lot of other really good tools and resources that are out there as well, some of which I've looked at in this video that is right here, if you're interested. And with that, I would like to say a very big thank you to my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Kyle, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steve, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.